okay in the last lecture we have finished off with the diazotization titration today we are going to start up with the new chapter of chemical method of analysis which majorly comes under quantitative method of analysis so may, uh, analysis is mainly categorized into two main classes qualitative analysis and quantitative analysis in qualitative analysis we are just going to find out the composition of analyte but in case of quantitative analysis we are going to find okay. out the concentration of analyte so depending upon the nature of analyte quantitative analysis is majorly categorized into four major classes that is chemical method of analysis physico chemical method of analysis microbiological and biological one in uh, pharmaceutical analysis one majorly we are going to cover up chemical method of analysis due to the chemical reaction occur between titrate and titrant we can be able to find out the concentration of the titrate so it comes under chemical chemical method of analysis is again further uh, classified into three classes that is volumetric analysis gravimetric analysis and gasometric analysis in practical sessions we have conducted the volumetric type of analysis that is from the volume of standard solution consumed by the by an analyte we can be able to find out the concentration of analyte so we are going to cover up the volumetric analysis in theory as well as practical sessions today we are going to start up with the second major method of chemical method of analysis that is gravimetry gravimetry is an modified form of precipitation type of titration gravimetry is derived from the greek word that is gravi means we are going to major uh, means we are going to convert the uh, weigh the compound and metry means we are going to major from the weight measurement of the weight of the compound we can be able to find out the concentration of analyte so gravimetric type of analysis comes under chemical method of analysis so points to be covered under gravimetric type of analysis is the principal and various steps to be involved in gravimetric analysis what is the purity of precipitate that is co precipitation post precipitation and estimation of the drug particularly barium sulfate by gravimetric analysis these are the three major points to be covered under gravimetric method so gravimetric it is a modified form of precipitation type of titration we are going to convert the analyte into precipitate form or precipitate form and from the weight of the precipitate we can be able to find out its concentration so firstly we are going to see definition of gravimetric analysis so gravimetric analysis is derived from the word gravi that means weighing and metric means measure from the measurement of weight of the analyte we can be able to find out its concentration so gravimetric analysis is concerned with the process of firstly producing the precipitate and then after weighing a compound and je ka precipitate we are going to prepare ka precipitate cha apan weight ghenar hai and weighing a compound or element in as pure form as possible after some form of chemical treatment has been carried out on the substance to be examined so in gravimetric analysis firstly we are going to produce the pre precipitate nextly we are going to purify the precipitate in an appropriate form we are going to convert it by applying the heat process and after applying the heating process and converting into an appropriate form we are going to weigh the compound and from the weight we can able to find out its concentration so this is the basic principle behind gravimetric analysis firstly we are going to precipitate the analyte after precipitating we are going to purify it by applying various purification process after purifying we are going to convert it into appropriate uh, appropriate form by heating and after heating we are going to weigh the substance and from the weight we can be able to find out its concentration so what are the advantages of gravimetric analysis over a uh, volumetric analysis it is most accurate method results given given by gravimetric analysis are more accurate as compared to volumetric analysis and it is also most precise one when you and with the help of modern analytical balance that is with the help of weight of the analyte we can be able to find out its concentration next advantage of gravimetric as analysis is the possible sources of errors can be easily checked say for example from the we are going to convert the analyte into precipitate form 
so we are going to filter that precipitate and filters can be tested for completeness of precipitants and precipitants may be examined for the presence of impurities so we are going to convert the analyte into precipitate form precipitate form madhe convert kela nantar je kai filtrate left or filtrate ahe kiwa left or mother liquor ahe ya mother liquor la apan completely precipitate form madhe convert jhale ka nahi te apan check karu shakto ani tyacha madhe tyacha mule apan errors minimize karu shakto by adding precipitating reagents to the mother liquor we can be able to completely convert the analyte into precipitate form after purification process of the precipitate and weighing the precipitate we can be able to find out its concentration so this is the second major advantage of gravimetric analysis third major advantage of gravimetric analysis it is an absolute method that is in it involves direct measurement without any form of calibration being required since the instrument used in gravimetric analysis is only analytical balance so no calibration is required no calibration of uh, different apparatus is required and the result given will be more i absolute one so this is the third advantage of gravimetric analysis so first advantage ka it is most accurate and precise method only with the help of analytical balance we can be able to find out the concentration of analyte so only one apparatus is required for measuring the concentration the first is accurate and precise one next me possible so minimum possible so errors can be incorporated by checking the mother liquor by adding precipitating reagent and by completely converting the analyte into precipitate form we can be able to weigh the analyte and it is an absolute method since it involves only calibration of balance and not other instrument so these are the three major advantages of gravimetric analysis next is the principle behind gravimetric analysis gravimetric analysis is concerned with the weighing of substance that has been either precipitated from solution with the help of precipitating agent or volatilization we are going to convert the analyte by reacting it with a appropriate precipitating reagent say for example if we are going to find out the concentration of chlorine we are going to add silver nitrate as an precipitating reagent after addition of silver nitrate to to the analyte that are containing chlorine formation of agcl precipitate takes place and from the weight of agcl we can be able to find out the concentration of chlorine so this is the basic principle behind gravimetric analysis that is from the weight of the precipitate uh, how precipitate can be formed by adding precipitating agent to the analyte after addition of precipitating agent to the analyte the analyte will get converted into precipitate and from the weight of precipitate we can be able to find out its concentration so accordingly gravimetric methods can be broadly classified into these four major classes that is precipitation method volatilization method electroanalytical method and miscellaneous physical method of which we are going to focus on precipitation method most commonly used method of this four method of gravimetric analysis is the precipitation method firstly we are going to prepare the solution form of analyte ja analyte manje kay the solution whose concentration is to be find out so we are going to firstly convert the analyte into solution form after converting the analyte into the solution form we are going to add precipitating reagent to that solution after adding precipitating reagent the analyte will get converted into precipitate form nextly we are going to filter out the precipitate after filter uh, filtering out the precipitate we are going to apply various purification process to the precipitate after purification we are going to heat or ignite the precipitate for converting it into a suitable form after heating and from the way we are going to weigh the precipitate after getting the weight of precipitate we are going to put the values into an appropriate formula uh, by applying the weight uh, by applying the uh, amount or by applying the weights to that formula we can be able to find out its concentration so these are the steps uh, that comes under gravimetric analysis or basic principle that comes under gravimetric analysis so gravimetric analysis can be performed by four major methods that of which we are going to fo focus on or of which we are going to studying on only precipitation method so this is the definition of four classes of gravimetric analysis so first is the precipitation method it precipitation majorly involves the conversion of analyte to sparingly soluble precipitate sparingly soluble as ka 
since we are going to convert the analyte into precipitate it should not be soluble in given solvent given solvent madhe te soluble nasayla pahije it should be sparingly soluble so that it can be easily converted into precipitate form then this uh, uh, this formed precipitate is then filtered off it is then washed washing is to be done in order to remove the impurities and it is then converted into a product of known composition by applying suitable heat treatment then uh, depending upon the nature of analyte how it is we can be up, uh, we can be able to apply various temperature of heat and we are going to convert the precipitate into suitable composition by applying the heat appropriate compo we are going to convert the precipitate into appropriate uh, composition and by weighing the weight of the product we can be able to find out its uh, composition so this is the precipitation method of gravimetric analysis second type of gravimetric analysis is the volatilization method in volatilization method the analyte whose concentration is to be find out or it it is uh, it is allowed to decompose products are volatilized at a suitable temperature means we are going to apply the heat directly we are not going to convert it into precipitate form by applying the heat it will get converted into appropriate composition and from the weight of the composition we can be able to find out its concentration so the product is then collected weighed and its concentration can be determined so this is the second class of gravimetric analysis that is by directly applying the heat we can be able to convert it into appropriate or known composition and from the weight of the composition we can be able to find out its concentration so this is the second class of gravimetric analysis third major classification of gravimetric analysis is the electroanalytical method in electroanalytical method the element or analyte whose concentration is to be determined is deposited electrically electrically on a suitable electrode say for example the analyte whose concentration is to be determined we are going to convert the analyte into solution form in that solution we are going to dip two electrodes and we are going to pass a current across the electrodes after passing the current across the electrodes the solution will get converted into ions forms and this ions will get migrated towards the respected electrodes and from the measurement of the color of uh, measurement of the current of the electrode we can be able to determine the concentration of the analyte so this is the basic principle behind electroanalytical method in electroanalytical method we are going to prepare the solution of analyte we are going to deposit the two electrodes into the analyte after depositing the electrodes we are going to apply the current across the electrodes due to the application of the current there is formation of ions into the solution of analyte the ions will get migrated towards the electrode and current will be generated from the amount of current generated we can be able to determine the concentration of analyte so this is the third classification of gravimetric analysis of this classification uh, the most accurate results are obtained by precipitation method of analysis and it is having various steps that we are going to study in further points next is concept of precipitation so precipitation uh, how we uh, we will be able to form the precipitate but that is by conversion of the analyte into the precipitate so these are the basic concepts behind gravimetric or precipitation type of gravimetric analysis in precipitation method the precipitates that is the element or ion being determined in a form which is a little soluble that no appropriate loss occurs when the precipitate is separated by filtration and weights means we are going to select appropriate precipitating reagent for an ion or element say for example if you are going to consider determination of annihilate that is chlorine in nscl then most then most commonly used precipitating reagent is the silver nitrate when we are going to add agno3 to nscl formation of agcl precipitate takes place and from the weight of precipitate we can be able to determine the concentration of chlorine so selection of appropriate precipitating reagent is very important in case of precipitation type of gravimetric analysis so frequently the constituent being determined is weight in a form that is different from its precipitate now then nextly जेका आपण प्रेसिपिटेट तयार केलेले ग्रायोमेट्रिक अनालिसिस तर दैट प्रेसिपिटेट वी आर गोइंग टू वे इन अ फॉर्म दैट इज डिफरेंट फ्रॉम इट्स प्रेसिपिटेट हाउ वी कैन कन्वर्ट द प्रेसिपिटेट इनटू डिफरेंट फॉर्म बाय अप्लाइंग द हीट दैट इज बाय इग्निशन प्रोसेस वी आर गोइंग टू कन्वर्ट द प्रेसिपिटेट इनटू अप्रोप्रिएट नॉन वेएबल फॉर्म एंड फ्रॉम द नॉन कंपोजिशन वी कैन बी एबल टू फाइंड आउट इट्स 
concentration example is the determination of either silver or a determination of either fluoride we are going to add uh, in the determination of sil uh, silver a solution of substance is treated with the excess solution of sodium chloride or potassium chloride solution the precipitate is then filtered off well washed to remove soluble salt and it is dried at a temperature of 130 to 150 degree centigrade and the and it is weighed as silver chloride so we are going to treat the nacl with agno3 formation of agcl precipitate takes place with the removal of nano3 so from the weight of jika precipitate agcl ta tayar honare ta precipitate la apan parat we are going to filter it off in order to remove the impurities after filtering off we are going to ignite the precipitate at a temperature of 130 to 150 degree centigrade after applying the heat or after ignition process the precipitate will get converted into a known composition form that can be easily weighed one and from the weight of precipitate we can be able to determine the concentration of agcl so this is the basic concept behind precipitation method next is the purity of precipitate during formation of precipitate various impurities may get adhere on the surface of the precipitate or it may get adhere inside the precipitate so that form uh, that is adherence of the impurities on or inside the precipitate is known as post precipitation and co precipitation so these are the two basic terms that comes under purity of precipitate along with precipitate or the uh, precipitate contains the analyte along with analyte impurities can also be get incorporated into the precipitate so that part is known as purity of precipitation so that impurity may be either in the form of post precipitation or either in the form of co precipitation so we will study one by one so when the precipitate separates out from the solution firstly we are going to the uh, we are going to treat the analyte with precipitating reagent we are going to convert the analyte into precipitate form the form precipitate is then separated out from the solution by applying the process of filtration and then it is uh, the it is always not per, uh, perfectly pure after filtering the precipitate is not pure one it contains impurities that is known as the contaminants with varying amount of impurities even after extensive वॉशिंग त्या प्रेसिपिटेटला वॉश केल्यानंतर केल्यानंतर पण त्याच्यामध्ये इम्प्युरिटीज असू शकतात सो दिस अमाऊंट ऑफ इम्प्युरिटीज डिपेंड्स अपॉन द नेचर ऑफ प्रेसिपिटेट अँड कंडिशन ऑफ प्रेसिपिटेशन सो अमाऊंट ऑफ इम्प्युरिटीज इन्कॉर्पोरेटेड इन टू अँड प्रेसिपिटेट दॅट मेजरली डिपेंड्स अपॉन द नेचर ऑफ प्रेसिपिटेट मीन्स वॉट इज द नेचर ऑफ युअर अनायलेट वॉट आर द कंडिशन ऑफ प्रेसिपिटेशन ह्या दोन बेसिक टर्म्स वर इम्प्युरिटीजचं कॉन्सन्ट्रेशन त्या प्रेसिपिटेटमध्ये राहील so the sources uh, which contaminates the precipitates are affecting which affects the gravimetric analysis are majorly post precipitation and co precipitation we are going to study it one by one first uh, most likely impurity to be incorporated into the form precipitant is by post precipitation method post precipitation method involves deposition of sparingly soluble impurity of similar properties to the analyte precipitate on the surface of precipitates after its formation say for example if we are going to add agno3 to nacl solution formation of agcl precipitate takes place on the surface of the agcl precipitates that is on the surface area of uh, agcl precipitate some of the sparingly soluble impurities may get adhere one or it may get attach one and that sort of impurity is known as post precipitation classical example is the adherence of the magnesium oxalate which is get deposited on the calcium oxalate precipitate so calcium oxalate precipitate is out in presence of magnesium ions satisfactorily without any interference but if the precipitate remains in contact with the mother liquor for a longer period of time magnesium ions can also be get adhere on the surface of calcium oxalate and uh, and forms a precipitate on the top of the calcium oxalate is a an example bagitlela that is formation of co precipitation of mag uh, magnesium oxalate on the surface of calcium oxalate here our analyte is the calcium oxalate we are going to measure the concentration of calcium oxalate but when we are going to place the precipitate into the mother liquor for a longer period of time that is during digestion process the magnesium ion which are also present into the mother liquor are most likely to be get adhere on the calcium oxalate and that uh, due to the adherence of this magnesium oxalate over the calcium oxalate impurity may get incorporated so this sort of impurity is known as the post precipitation 
and post precipitation is avoided by filtering the calcium oxalate with one or two hours after precipitation means after forming every times of precipitation we are going to wash the uh, precipitate during washing post precipitation can be easily washed out and the firm precipitate will be more pure one next part of a purity of precipitate is the co precipitation and the co precipitation involves the impurities appears to have precipitate along with the substance to be analyzed although its solubility product is not exceeded and it would not have been participated or had the analyte been absent this phenomena is known as co precipitation in short co precipitation involves insertion of soluble substances in the precipitate during its formation that is we are je uh, post precipitation hota post post precipitation post precipitation madhe je ka precipitate ch surface hai tacha var impurities adhere hoti but in case of co precipitation impurity will get inculcated that is that it there is the uh, adherence or there is the insertion of the uh, impurities inside the precipitate example is a mixture of barium chloride and potassium permanganate solution excess of sulfuric acid is added to remove the potassium permanganate impurity which is adhered on the barium chloride so it, the most commonly uh, impurity in case of barium chloride and potassium permanganate is the potassium permanganate solution potassium permanganate solution it can be reduced by adding the agent that is sulfuric acid and the potassium permanganate is reduced by the addition of re, uh, reducing agent and after the reaction the solution becomes colorless and uh, colorless but the precipitate appears to be violet in color due to the insertion of the potassium permanganate inside the barium chloride so what is the major difference between post precipitation and co precipitation post precipitation madhe impurities get adhere on the surface of precipitate but in case of co precipitation the impurities will get in uh, inculcation that is insertion of the impurities inside the precipitate has been occurred example ahe barium chloride and potassium permanganate potassium permanganate he barium chloride che inside madhe inculcation zhalela hai mhanje insert zhalela hai tyachamule precipitate cha color ha white uh, white che avji violet hai next is the types of co precipitation co precipitation occurs either due to surface adsorption mixed crystal formation occlusion or mechanical entrapment we will study this uh, types of co precipitate one by one first part of co precipitation is the surface adsorption if the surface area of precipitate is more more impurities are likely to be get adhered with the precipitate and errors may get incorporated so surface adsorption mainly depends upon the surface area of precipitates if the surface area is less surface adsorption will be less one if the surface area is more adsorption will be more one so precipitate formation always always involves the formation of colloidal particles into the initial stages and particles grow into larger sized coarse particles gradually so colloidal particles with their larger surface area facilitates adsorption of different types of ions or impurities initially we are going to add precipitating agent dropwise to the solution of analyte dropwise we are going to add the uh, precipitating reagent to the analyte so therefore first the precipitate is dispersed over the mother liquid therefore uh, surface absorption occur occurrence of surface absorption will be more one but when we are going to allow the uh, mother liquid to stand for a period of 10 to 12 hours say for example in case of digestion process the dispersed form of precipitate will get converted into a more uh, dense uh, precipitate form more dense precipitate form will have lesser surface area therefore surface absorption will be lesser one so the ionic impurities present in layer are precipitated along with the main precipitants so uh, they, this impurities will form a layer over the precipitate there are various factors which affect the surface absorption first factor which affects the surface absorption is the effect of concentration adsorption of that is adsorption of uh, various substance increases with their concentration in the solution is increases say for example if the concentration of impurities is more in mother liquid then uh, uh, surface absorption will be more that is if the concentration of electrolyte is more then concentration of adsorption will be more one next is the effect of temperature 
if the temperature uh, if the temperature for forming the precipitate increases absorption will be decrease one that will get dissolved into the mother liquor and it will not form a layer over the precipitate since adsorption is an exothermic process it is favored by decreasing temperature if we decrease the temperature condition for forming the precipitate then adsorption will be increase one next effect that affects the surface adsorption is the effect of precipitate condition adsorption is much affected by uh, exper uh, by experimental by experimental conditions such as concentration of reacting solutions and temperature we should need to uh, balance the rea uh, that that is effect of concentration and temperature concentration required should be low and temperature should be high in that case only surface absorption can be lowered one so these are the precipitation conditions to be maintained for the formation of precipitate fourth criteria criteria that uh, affects the uh, surface absorption is the effect of adsorbent area for crystalline precipitates formation of surface adsorption is less as compared to colloidal one colloidal precipitate will give more surface area for adherence of impurities while the uh, crystalline will give less one so these are the four parameters that affect the surface adsorption that is effect of concentration concentration of impurities should be low if the concentration is low at, uh, obviously absorption will be adsorption will be low if the uh, next is the effect of temperature if we are going to increase the temperature of precipitation formation then uh, surface adsorption will be low and surface absorption will be high if we go if we are going to decrease the temperature next is the effect of precipitation conditions we should maintain the con uh, level of concentration as well as the temperature for getting a most abundant or dense precipitate form next is the effect of adsorbent area in case of crystalline precipitate a surface absorption is low as compared to the colloidal one second part of co precipitation is the occlusion so occlusion occurs when during the formation of precipitate that is foreign ions in the counter ion layer may get become trapped or occluded within the growing crystals je kai firstly mother liquor madhe precipitate asnar hai te precipitate pura disperse zalele asnar hai mother liquor madhe at that at that time occlusion may get occur that is impurities may get adhere on surface of each and every part of precipitate and when this precipitate uh, for uh, when and when this precipitate comes together for formation of for formation of larger molecule occlusion may get occurs so impurities due to occlusion are minimum as the rate of precipitation formation is low the rate of formation or uh, low asel precipitates so the impurities may get occluded one and if the impurities isomorphs form solid with that of the precipitate formation of occlusion will be more one now as the amount of co precipitate will be very high as there will be no tendency for elimination during the aging process so this is the second part of co precipitation next is to the third part of co precipitation post precipitation or co precipitation are nothing but that but it is the impurities present co precipitation matlab first part hai surface absorption second part hai uh, uh, and third part is the mixed crystal formation second part occlusion and third part is the mixed crystal formation uh, formation in mixed crystal formation one of the ion in the crystal lattice of the solid is replaced by the ion of another element je ka dusra ion present hai that is having the nature similar to that of the ion the formation of mixed crystal formation takes place and for mixed crystal formation it is necessary that the two ions should have same charges and their size should be differ by not more than 5% example is formation of mixed crystal contamination is only possible in precipitates of barium as barium sulfate in presence of lead as an ion ion ani barium uh, sorry lead ani barium madla je kai uh, crystal lattice tayar hoil that will contains the impurity that is the lead one we are going to remove the impurity by applying the process of washing second example is the strontium sulfate in presence of barium and cadmium sulfate in presence of manganese so these are the most likely impurities that is strontium sulfate what is the method for removing the impurities in the form of mixed crystal for, uh, formation that is we are uh, the only way this problem can be overcome is by separating the analyte from the contaminating uh, contaminating ions prior to precipitation 
प्रेसिपिटेशन तैयार हो आधी जे का मिक्स्ड क्रिस्टल्स है हाविंग द सेम प्रॉपर्टीज दैट इज सेम चार्जेस एंड सेम आइसोमर्स वी आर गोइंग टू रिमूव इट बिफोर फॉर्मेशन ऑफ द प्रेसिपिटेट both uh, type of co precipitation is the mechanical entrapment mechanical entrapment is the entrapment of the uh, mother liquid in the form of tiny pockets in between the precipitate so mechanical entrapment occurs when several crystals growing together come closer to each other and trap a portion of solution on pockets between the crystal je crystal cha in between je ka mother liquid entrap jhala that is known as mechanical entrapment by applying the process of filtration we can be able to remove the mechanical entrapment second is the contamination of precipitate can be avoided by using homogeneous precipitation techniques by applying the homogeneous that is that there should not be addition of heterogeneous atom we can be able to remove the mechanical entrapment so homogeneous precipitation gives readily filterable dense and relatively pure precipitates how can we get homogeneous precipitation that is je ka precipitate tayar hunar hai that should be uh, homogeneous one that is that is it should be evenly spread into the mother liquid not in a uh, sections one example is the hydrolysis of urea generates uh, hydroxide ions homogeneously for precipitate of hydroxides of metals such as al ga fp th bi and sn so these are the four classes of co precipitation next is the techniques or steps involved in gravimetric analysis these are the 10 methods by with the help of which we can be able to find out the concentration of analyte by gravimetric analysis first step is sampling second is the preparation of solution or dissolution third is the precipitation fourth is testing the completeness of precipitation Fifth is the digestion or aging. Sixth is the filtration. Seventh is washing of precipitant. Eighth is drying or ignition. Depending upon the nature of our analyte, we are going to apply the process. Ninth one is the weighing, and tenth one is the calculation. These are the ten basic steps for performing gravimetric analysis. By performing these ten basic steps, we can be able to find out the concentration of analyte. first step involved in gravimetric analysis is the sampling sampling is the selection of the analyte next is the preparation of solution or dissolution we will study the steps one by one first is the sampling the sample which is weighed for the quantitative analysis is very small therefore it is necessary to take a representative sample correctly to ensure that the results are accurate सैम्पलिंग जे का मोट मस है एनालेट से जिस अपने कॉन्सन्ट्रेशन फाइंड आउट कराएम एक छोट पार्ट वी आर गोइंग टू विड्रॉ एंड दैट सैम्पल शुड बी होमोजीनस वन एंड इन इट इट शुड बी इन अ फॉर्म ऑफ पाउडर वन दैट पाउडर वी आर गोइंग टू कन्वर्ट इट इन टू सोल्यूशन फॉर्म बाय डिजोल्यूशन प्रोसेस सो एन आइडियल सैम्पल वुड बी आइडेंटिकल इन ऑल इट्स प्रॉपर्टीज विद द बल्क ऑफ मटेरियल फ्रॉम विच इट हेज बीन taken so in sampling process we are not going to select larger mass for performing the analysis larger mass matlab we are just going to take a small por portion for performing the gravimetric analysis that small portion should be representative of whole of the bulk material and it should be homogeneous one that is it should contain all the representative part of bigger sample and it should be present in a powder form next step involved in gravimetric analysis is the डिजोल्यूशन जे का अपन पोर्शन सिलेक्ट के सैम्पलिंग मधु बल्क मधु छोटा पार्ट दैट स्मॉल पार्ट वी आर गोइंग टू डिजोल्व इट इन टू अट स्मॉल पार्ट वी आर गोइंग टू टेक इन टू अन बीकर एंड वी आर गोइंग टू ट्रांसफर दी वेट सैम्पल कम्प्लीटली टू अ बीकर फर्स्टली वी आर गोइंग टू विड्रॉ द सैम्पल फ्रॉम बल्क अ स्मॉल पोर्शन दैट स्मॉल पोर्शन वी आर गोइंग टू टेक इट इन टू अ बीकर नेक्स्टली वी आर गोइंग टू एड सफिशियंट वॉटर टू द सैम्पल टू गेट अ क्लियर लिक्विड so we are going to convert the powder which is selected into the sampling procedure into solution form by adding water as a solvent and if the substance is soluble in acid or alkalis and the reaction is likely to evolve the gases then the reaction is to allow to take place in the evolution of gases say for example uh, depending upon the nature of analyte whether it is acidic alkaline we are going to use we are going to select the appropriate and solvent if it is not soluble we are going to apply the heat process and if heating is necessary for dissolution 
the heat, uh, we are going to apply the heat on water bath we are not going to heat directly the solution so this is the second step first step ka we are going to firstly uh, withdraw small portion of sample from bulk sample next procedure madhe we are going to convert the uh, small portion of the powder into solution form by appropriately choosing a solvent say so firstly we are going to choose water if it is not soluble in water we are going to choose appropriate solvent and if the analyte is acidic or alkaline in nature it may evolve the gas in that case we are going to perform the dissolution process in an appropriate apparatus for evolving the toxic gases and if then also it is not soluble in acids or alkali then we are going to apply the heat heat kashi apply karachi we are not directly going to apply the heat we are going to heat the beaker in a water bath in order to avoid the decomposition or deterioration of the product third step in gravimetric analysis is the precipitation we are going to add appropriate precipitating reagent depending upon the nature of analyte so firstly we are going to choose proper precipitant and it, uh, a choice of precipitant is based on the specificity of reagent if it is not specific at least it should be selective one specific asala paije ani selective asala paije next for the ideal precipitant it should react with analyte to form the precipitate which can be easily filtered washed in order to get uh, it free from any sort of impurities it should be low, uh, low it should have low solubility it should be stable and should have constant known composition after drying je ka precipitate apan tayar karnar hai tachi solubility mother liquid madhe kami asela paije tar tya mother liquid madhe soluble jala tar precipitate tayar as hona nahi then we are not able to filter it off next is the precipitation generally should be carried out in a resistance glass beaker with slow addition of dilute solution of precipitant with sufficient stirring we are going to add the precipitating reagent to a beaker containing solution of analyte uh, drop wise at a time precipitating reagent we are not going to add and the reaction should be carried out in hot conditions in order to coagulate the mass of precipitate form and only a moderate excess of precipitate is generally required a very large excess of precipitate may increase the solubility so this will be this is the third step in gravimetric analysis we will study the remaining steps of gravimetric analysis in next class first step kutla hai 